Hi, I'm Tom Freiburg from WWI Magazine. We're here at the Aquatech Amsterdam show. I'm pleased I'm joined by Li Xiang Liang, who's a principal scientist at Evoqua. Li, thanks yes. for joining me and good to see you. Yes, good to see you. So, Lee, you've got 30 years' experience mm -hmm. in developing water treatment technologies, many patents to names, your name and your, your well-respected figure. So tell us, really, how you've seen the industry evolve over 30 years and how some of those drivers have really changed. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think the overall change in the, in the industry in some ways reflects, uh, say, for example, analogous to the change in the computing capability or computing technology. In the beginning, I think most of the industry uh, equipment was based on large tanks, large vessels, large unit operations. Then over time, we start developing modular approach to it, where instead of what you do is modular blocks that you use to in parallel to build large systems. So the analogy, for example, would be something like from the mainframe computer down to workstations that you can parallel up to get higher capability. Then I think due to the you know due to the pressure or the constraints of resources, energy, for example, and water, we start seeing now then a an evolution towards more efficient use of these resources, um, and use uh, the modular units become smaller, more efficient, and a lot of that is due to the development of membranes. You can see that in reverse osmosis, and you see that in electrodialysis, etc., or pressure filtration. And I think that trend is going on now. We are getting to the point where uh, we have equipment that can do in a much smaller envelope, much less energy, what the original old equipment, the large tank-based equipment could do. So the next step that I see, again, because of these constraints on resources, is further min miniaturization. Uh, if we are looking, for example, going toward more towards a nano size scale, that's feasible. Um, we're looking at uh, equipment that could be run m even more efficiently through very intelligent controls. And what I see going forward is now not only this reduction in size and efficiency, but also the capability to now control it in very intelligent ways that, are, for example, are very decentralized. But in addition to that, what I see is an evolution towards a, uh, from a control in point of view, instead of large controls towards distributed controls that each of them which will have individual um, capability to do to communicate and to control individual devices. Um, the, the analogous there again is for example we're looking at from workstations to PCs, now from PCs to laptops, then we're down to tablets, we're down to phones, and now we're down to wristwatches. To watches, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I think, where, where we're going. At some point, the intelligence will be shared between the devices. It could be shared up in the cloud. I, I foresee the point where individual pieces of modular equipment will be running on their own with quite a bit of built-in controls and so that they can run as efficiently as possible. And they don't have to be synchronized. They could be individually running at the best rate possible. This is very much like, again, you know, what we have now. We have social, you know, the, the whole social interaction via the internet. Um, it would be very similar. You have, I think we would have where it's, the, it's spread throughout a plant where of all these individual equipment working at, you know, adapting, and perhaps at some point we'll introduce have artificial intelligence built in. And I think that's probably where we're going. And it would be quite different when, from when I started, which is, you know, big heavy tanks, big heavy equipment, big heavy pumps. And I think that kind of ties in with the you know, key themes we're seeing, like the industrial internet of things and big data. So yes. you're getting data from technology about almost you're preempting when there's going to be a breakdown as opposed to yes. suffering the breakdown and then having plant downtime. Right. So you're getting more information, more feedback yep. from these technologies. It's becoming smarter. Yes. And I think one of the things we're working on now, for example, is you know, control technologies used to be based exactly on that. They're based on a reactive way, a feedback. Something happens, you react to it. I think that, again, because of the wealth of data available, uh, you could do this kind of predictive thing. You could run a plant that could anticipate that on a certain day, the de water demand will go up, or the temperature will change, or the weather will change, or some other factor will change. You should be, we should be able to come up with that uh, type of control where we preemptively start preparing for that change so that when it comes, 
we are still running at our peak efficiency. And, and you're, so you're, you're adapting your supply according to your demand. But absolutely. Okay, yeah, you yeah. Know? And I think there are some technologies, for example, like especially, the, for example, the electrochemical technology, where you could vary the energy consumption in order to, well, you could vary the energy consumption in response to, say, a change in feed water or change in product water requirement. So you could have a system that is constantly adapting to the changing environment. And again, to meet a particular goal, whether it's an energy reduction or better quality or uh, minimum capital requirement, et cetera. So I mean, that's, that's kind of a really interesting insight over the 30 years. But looking forward, if we're having this conversation 30 years from now, yes. what, what do you think will be the key kind of changes you'll, you'll see in the industry? Well, what I'm hoping for to see is some major breakthrough, again, on a something analogous to sort of membrane type of thing. And again, we're look, we may be looking at um, something that is extremely on a nano scale, if that's feasible, uh, that where we can again miniaturize and package in very small area and decentralize. You know, this whole thing of decentralization, which applied to computers, you know, from mainframe to everyone carrying a small, basically our, our iPhones are more powerful than a the PC. as well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I think we may be in a situation where we have this de decentralized system where instead of a central treatment plant, you may have a lot of small treatment plants, you know, individually again running for the optimum conditions for that particular optimum neighborhood, etc. Excellent, well, Lee, really interesting insights sure. there, and um, we look forward to hearing from you more moving forward and the industry adopting some of those changes. So uh, yeah. thank you for your time. Right, thank you. Thank you. Right.